Hello, welcome back to the channel. And we're into March, so it's St David's Day when I'm filming this. Um, and it's time to look back at February, at my solar generation, my energy usage, my money savings, my money in from SEG, and all that sort of information. So before I start that, first of all, thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. It does help the channel out. Um, basically puts it in front of more people and more people can get this information and yeah it's just generally good for the community if you can hit um, subscribe to people's um, videos or channels. Um, February was a bit of a quiet month as far as the channel is concerned I only released the video right at the very beginning of February reviewing January um, that's for a number of reasons first of all um, been quite busy with things like wedding dances and the tango stuff um, I had this flu thing that was been going around, um, which took me out for about a week. And also, um, with my other job as a university lecturer, I've been having to do a lot of work preparing for some lectures that are coming up on that. However, that does mean that in March, I am going to be making some videos that relate to the content in those lectures that I'll be putting out. So, um, I'm currently lecturing on three courses. Um, one is on solar energy. And... The different emerging technologies is one of the lectures that have come out, which I'm going to be given next Tuesday. So, this uh, revolves around things like perovskite solar cells, disensitized solar cells, uh, quantum dot solar cells. Um, so, what I'll be doing with the channel this month is making some short videos explaining those to the general audience. So, they won't be specific to scientist it will be a sort of a general background just so you get an idea of what is happening with solar panels in the industry. Um, another lecture I'm going to be giving on that course is about the social and economic impact of solar panels so I'll probably condense some of that down into a video that is so, uh, suitable for YouTube as well. Anyway let's go and have a look back at my solar generation in uh, February. I'm going to start off this video with this graph. So this is the graph of my yearly of my generation um, for each month and comparing the different years. So the orange bars are for 2023 for each month and as you can see I've got a full year's worth of data there. The darker blue uh, is for 2022 where we only had the panels at the end of August and therefore you've got full months data for September, October, uh, November and December and the pale grey is for 2024 and the reason I'm starting with this uh, this graph is because it really sums up what February was like for solar production here in Swansea. Um, as you can see last year we generated about 270 kilowatt hours in February. This year we are significantly less. So there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all last year was the driest February um, on record according to um, one news source I read um, and this was one of the wettest Februarys in um, on record. So if we actually go to the graph of my generation on a day-to-day -day basis in February 2024 uh, you can see what I generally mean. So there was only what uh, one two three four five, six, seven days out of 29 where we produced over 10 kilowatt hours. And if you look at the days where we produce in less than five kilowatt hours, there are a lot of them. And there's also long periods where we had multiple days where we were generating less than two kilowatt hours. You can see that between the uh, 2nd and the 6th of February. So it's been very cloudy here. Um, I was speaking to some, a parent of somebody I tutor, so that's another reason why I made my videos. I was doing a lot of private tutoring of physics and maths as well. Um, that there's only been three days in February where it didn't rain here in Swansea. So, yeah, there has been very little generation. So the best day for generation was back on the 26th, I think that is, um, where we... Ha uh, generated 20 kilowatt hours in one day but other days we were generating about one kilowatt hour so that's been the maximum and minimum which means in total in February we only generated 
159.3 kilowatt hours. So that's significantly less than last year, well it's 110 kilowatt hours less than last year. And it was also less than January, where we generated 195 kilowatt hours. So if we now go to the graph where we look at the usage of my solar powers. So this graph shows both my usage and my uh, input. So the real input, so this is money that I've um, measured off my smart meter, um, is in red. The um, battery dish, um, so, so the self use, let's do that next, which is the green. So this is energy we've produced on the roof and we're using in real time. Um, so you can see that most days there's a small amount of green. Um, yellow is the battery discharge, so this is energy we've generated on the roof stored in our 5 kilowatt hour uh, pure drive battery um, and then used throughout the day. Um, we don't charge yet the battery from the grid, we're not on a tariff that allows that yet or would make it uh, or would make any difference if we did do it as far as finance is concerned. Um, a little bit more on that later. Um, so, yeah, there, um, there was some de discharge on most days, but still not a huge amount. And the blue is the export. So you can see how few days we were exporting back to the grid on. Right, so let's have a put this into some perspective. So this is a, a graph of our energy use month on month, and it's split into uh, what we've imported from the grid in red and the electricity that we've generated ourselves in blue that we've used. So you can see in February we used about 197 kilowatt hours of which 112, just under 112, was generated ourselves, and 85.88 kilowatt hours we had to import from the grid. So as I say, that was more than in January where we only had to import 76 kilowatt hours. So in terms of uh, export, what we exported would have been the difference between that 111 and the uh, 160 that we generated. So that's about roughly 50 kilowatt hours we sent back to the grid. And those were from those days where it was particularly sunny. It would be far better if we had a really big battery and we could have saved it and used it uh, later, but we haven't got that. Though I am looking in to get another battery because in the UK there has been the VAT has been removed on battery ins battery only installations, so that's now becoming more attractive, and also the prices of batteries has dropped. So uh, I'm also looking into that as well. So let's see how that looks in terms of money. So that's what this graph shows. So the red is the import and we spent £16.82 uh, on import, which I think is one of the most we've ever spent on electricity import. Um, we spent slightly more than that. We spent £17.27 in December last year. And uh, yeah, that's the worst month we've had. So it's the second worst um, month since having our solar panels we've had for energy import. Um, so that figure is calculated from my uh, British gas rate which is roughly about 19p per kilowatt hour of import. Um, that tariff does finish at the end of this month so this month I am going to be switching and I think I will be going for Octopus Energy. So if you have got this far for the video and you're an Octopus Energy customer and you have a referral code, if you want to ping me that uh, referral code down in the uh, comments below, whoever is the first one to comment it, that's the one I will be using if I go with Octopus uh, Energy. Right, uh, then we've got the green, which is our money saves. This is money that we would have been paying to British Gas if we didn't have the solar panels. So that's £21.92. Um, and finally, uh, I should say that none of these figures include the standing charge. And then finally, we've got the £7.87, which is our SEG payment, which is also with British Gas, which is paying um, 15p per kilowatt hour. So in total, that means that this month we have been 
43.42% uh, reliant on the grid, which again is our second highest uh, reliance on the grid since we've had the solar panels. Um, and add in that £21.92 to the £7.87 comes to £29.79. Uh, £29 so that's our effective payback on the solar panels, uh, which means for 2024 so far, um, we have made a saving of £49.57. Uh, uh, we have made £16.57 from SEG. So that totals uh, £66.13 in um, effectively payback of our um, initial cost of our solar panels, which was about £8,500 back in 2022. And our money on import so far has been £31.73, and pence, which is nearly half um, as much, uh, so in, let's put that in a different way, in uh, 2023 we spent about £69 in total on import. So we're nearly halfway there and we're only two months into the year. So let's hope that through uh, March we actually have some sun, uh, mostly because I'd actually like to go out and do some cycling and also I'd also like to go and do some stuff in the garden. So final graph for today, this is sort of the money um, payback on each um, month. So again, same colours as the very first graph I've shown in here, this um, video. So you can see uh, last year we made just under £40 payback in uh, February. So this is the sum of money saved and the SEG. This month has been significantly lower. However, in uh, January last year, uh, or January this year, we made slightly more money, so it's almost offset, so it's almost equaling out year on year, which I suppose is the whole point of averages. Anyway, uh, thank you for um, watching this video. Uh, say if you haven't subscribed, please do, and I'll see you in another video very soon.